Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to my pre-playoff predictions for the 2017 NHL Stanley Cup playoffs. In the previous portion of the episode, of course, we talked about who we thought were going to win the four divisions in the NHL. Now we're going to talk about who's going to make the playoffs behind those teams. Just as a refresher, in the Eastern Conference, I have Columbus winning the Metropolitan Division, winning the President's Trophy with the most points, having home ice throughout the playoffs, and I like Montreal on the second tiebreaker to win the Atlantic Division. In the West, Central Division, I like Chicago to hang on, win that division there by a couple of points, and I like San Jose to hold on to the lead they currently have and win the Pacific. Now, how about the teams that are going to come in behind them? Let's start in the Eastern Conference this time, and we'll go to the Metropolitan Division. Again, of course, Columbus, I believe, going to win this division, surpass Washington to win the division. Obviously, that means I've got Washington sitting in second place. I got Columbus at 115 points with 49 ROW. I've got Washington right behind them, one point behind them. Also with 49 ROW, I got Washington finishing with 114 points, finishing in second place in the division. Third place, I think it's going to probably stay relatively close to what it is right now. I expect the Pittsburgh Penguins to hold on to third place in this division. I got Pittsburgh finishing with 112 points, three points behind the division winner, two points behind the second place team. I like Pittsburgh to finish the division in third place at the end of the regular season, take the third playoff spot in the Met. And we all knew it was going to come down to this. Look, whatever Metropolitan team didn't get one of the automatic playoff bids, you knew they were going to be wild card one in terms of the playoffs. And that's going to be the New York Rangers. They're not going to get one of those top three spots. I've got them getting to 108 points, just shy of 110. So 108 points. I've got them with 47 ROW, actually one more than Pittsburgh. But I figure Pittsburgh's going to finish with, you know, four or five more points than they do. So New York Rangers very comfortably, I might add, in the wild card one spot. It does mean they start the playoffs on the road. But hey, making the playoffs better than not making the playoffs. I expect the Rangers to finish in the top wild card spot. The other teams in this division, the Islanders, uh, the Flyers, Carolina, New Jersey, they're just, they're just playing too far back. They just don't have enough games left. To make up that kind of gap, even if one of them did really catch fire. I've got the Islanders finishing with 90 points, 91, sorry. 90 points is not good enough to make the playoffs anymore. You've got to have 95, 95 plus. That's just what it takes to make the playoffs in the modern NHL. 91 points, not going to be quite good enough for the Islanders. I think they drop off. I'm glad that the Met division is not, at least in my predictions, not going to get both of the wild card spots, just like I want another Atlantic Division team in there. So I don't have the Islanders making the playoffs. Philly, I've got them finishing with 84 points. That's a relatively respectable season. Like, look, 80 points, it means like ultimately if you lost every single game in the regular season in a shootout, well, you still have 82 points. So 80 points, 84, I've got them at. It's not, it's respectable. It's, it's, it's not, it's not terrible. Uh, ditto with Carolina. I've got Carolina getting to 83. Again, it's not great, but I mean, Carolina has certainly been worse in recent memory. So 80 points, nothing for Carolina to hang their heads about. Uh, Jersey, a little bit. I've only got Jersey getting to 74 points, 26 ROW. They finish in the basement of this division. They're in there for, you know, a lottery potential pick something along the lines jersey's going to pick pretty high in the upcoming draft i would say top five top six somewhere like that they've only got 64 points right now i've only got them getting to 74 points for the rest of the regular season so i like columbus to win the division washington second place pittsburgh third place and i like the new york rangers to grab that first wild card spot in the east all right, Atlantic Division. We already talked about who I think is going to win the division. That is my Montreal Canadiens. Awesome. Again, it's going to take a tiebreaker because I think they finish tied, dead tied, at 103 points with the Ottawa Senators. Obviously, that means I like Ottawa to be the number two team in the Atlantic Division. That's where I'm going to go with that. Montreal won by winning the division. Ottawa, number two. Boston, I think they're going to hold on. It's going to be tough against the team that comes up behind them. But I think Boston ultimately 
will hold on even though they give up a game or two in hand to the team behind them. I think they hold on here. They don't get to 100 points. I've got Boston getting to 99 points exactly with 42 ROW. I think that's going to be good enough to hold on for third place in the division and get that automatic third playoff spot in the Atlantic Division. So I like Montreal 1, Ottawa 2, Boston 3. Now like we talked about, the real battle was going to be for Toronto and Tampa Bay as to which of those teams ends up ultimately making the playoffs. Let's talk about the other teams in the division. Let's just let's just let's clean those up before we talk about how that's going to go. Uh right now it's Florida with 71 points, Buffalo with 68, Detroit with 65. I think that's the order that they ultimately end up in. I've got uh Florida getting to 84 points, 29 ROW again, 80 plus points, nothing to hang your head about. That's, it's not a successful season, we'll call it that, but it's also not an absolute disaster. So 84 points for Florida. I've only got Buffalo getting to 78 with 30 ROW. They don't quite get to 80. Detroit, I think, is going to finish just behind them. 76 points with 22 ROW. And that was really Detroit's big problem there. If you got them into overtime or the shootout, they didn't win a lot of those games, so only 22 ROW, but I do like them to get to 76 points. Again, not complete disasters, but Detroit definitely in a rebuilding phase for the first time in three decades. It's, it's kind, of, uh, kind of interesting to watch. All right, enough stalling. Toronto, Tampa Bay. Here's how it sits right now as a reminder. Toronto, 78 points, 31 ROW. Tampa Bay, 77 points, 30 ROW. So Tampa Bay is a point behind and an ROW behind in terms of making the playoffs, not making the playoffs. Both of these teams struggle on the road. They're both 15 and 21 in the season so far. Straight up win game versus losing game on the road away from their own building. Tampa Bay is the slightly better home team. Tampa Bay 19 and 15 at home so far this season. Toronto only 17 and 16. Toronto has one game in hand in this uh, matchup and they do play one more time this season head to head. That game is in Toronto and I do think Toronto wins that game. Toronto's got a bit of a deadly stretch coming up here. Chicago at Columbus. Uh, they have to go into Nashville. They've got a pretty tough schedule coming up here. The first half of what they have remaining in the regular season. Tampa Bay on the same level. They got Washington coming to town. They have to go to Boston. They've got Montreal coming. They've got Chicago coming. Tampa Bay certainly does not have an easy run of things either. The real difference here is one of these two teams is going to catch fire at the end of the regular season. In fact, one of these two teams is going to win outright their final six games of the regular season and that's going to be good enough to put them over the top. The other team's probably going to play about 500 hockey in that same stretch. So really, for the rest of the regular season, I think that one team only going to play about 500 hockey. The other team, look out. That team is the Toronto Maple Leafs. I've got Toronto making the playoffs. Wild card two. Last Eastern Conference team to get in. God damn it, Tank Nation, the rebuild, the Shanna plan. I expect it to pay off this season. Mark it down. Toronto is going to make the playoffs. And look, here's how it breaks down. I think Toronto wins those last six games of the regular season schedule. Why do I think that? At Detroit, nothing to play for. At Buffalo, nothing to play for. Home stretch. Their final four games at home against, you know, mediocre road teams. Washington's a great team, but they're a mediocre road team. Tampa Bay, I think that's going to be a very pivotal game in here. I think Toronto wins that game. Pittsburgh, average road team. What did we say Pittsburgh was? 16 and 19 on the road. Average road team may not have anything to play for at this point in the season. They may already be locked in to the spot that they're at. And then Columbus, again, I don't think Columbus is going to have much to play for. I think they'll already have the division wrapped up by then. I like Toronto to win those last six games straight up, 
mark it down, the Toronto Maple Leafs are a playoff team in 2017 as the Wild Card 2 team, they make the playoffs in the Eastern Conference. That would give us round one playoff matchups of Columbus as the number one seed in the East taking on Toronto in the first round. Gives us Washington versus Pittsburgh in the Met two versus three. The Atlantic against the wild card. I got Montreal taking on the Rangers. Who wouldn't love to see them go another round? Especially if Lundqvist is healthy, Price is healthy. Two of the best goaltenders in the world going head to head. Who in the hell wouldn't want to see that? And then Ottawa taking on Boston in the Atlantic two versus three. That's the playoff matchups that that would set up. That's how I think it's going to go. Columbus and Montreal win the divisions. We like Washington and Pittsburgh to get two and three. And we like Ottawa and Boston to get two and three in the respective divisions. The Rangers take wild card one. And the Toronto Maple Leafs mark it down, mark it down, mark it down. The Toronto Maple Leafs make the playoffs as wild card two. So there's the East, and let's now go to the West. Of course, we talked about Chicago and San Jose as being the two respective division winners here. Chicago, I've got getting to 112 points to be the number one seed in the West. San Jose, the number two seed in the West, getting to 107 points. Now let's talk about the rest. Let's do the Pacific Division first. So we're going to start again. San Jose wins this division. I think they win the division comfortably by, you know, six, seven points. It's multiple games. And again, every team in this division has the exact same number of games left. So in terms of trying to catch a team to pass them to make the playoffs or make a, get into a better position to make the playoffs, it's going to be difficult because nobody's got any games in hand on anybody. Here's the standings as they sit right now. Anaheim, 84 points with 34 ROW. Edmonton, 83 points with 33 ROW. So a point behind and an ROW behind Anaheim. Calgary, 82 points with 35 ROW. They've got more ROW than the teams in front of them. They just don't quite have the points yet. We got Los Angeles, who's still there, 75 points, 32 ROW. Bringing up the rear teams that are not going to make the playoffs. You got Vancouver, 65 points, 24 ROW. And Arizona, of course, playing for the top pick, I guess. 61 points with only 20 ROW. So again, I've got Arizona getting the 72 points, maybe 23, 24 ROW. They're still going to pull up the rear in this division. Vancouver, I've got them getting to 77 points, 27 ROW. There, again, that's, you got to consider that season a failure. When you've got the Sedins, like just when you've got the Sedins, when you've got Ryan Miller, you should be competing. And Vancouver, by and large, not really that competitive of a team this season. So they're, they're probably the, the Canadian team where you look at them and you're just like, really? Like, really? Now, as we mentioned before, there's that real jumbled mess there in that division. Not necessarily in terms of who's going to win it, but in who's going to come up, you know, two and three and a potential wild card spot behind them. Again, as I like San Jose to win the division, we've got Anaheim, Edmonton, and Calgary all jockeying for those two and three spots. Right now, it sits Anaheim two, Edmonton three, Calgary four. And I think that's actually how it's going to wind up for the rest of the regular season. I've got Anaheim and Edmonton both making it to 100 points. In fact, exactly 100 points. But I've got Anaheim with 39 ROW. I've only got Edmonton with 38. So based on the second tiebreaker, the number two tiebreaker, which is wins in regulation and overtime, I have to give Anaheim the number two seed in the Pacific Division over Edmonton because I think they'll have one more ROW. But again, I've got both of these teams getting to 100 points before the end of the season, having three teams in that division be 100-point teams and one of them being Canadian. That's pretty awesome to me, especially with how, I mean, how long Edmonton fans have been waiting. We talked about Toronto. Edmonton fans that haven't made the playoffs in a decade. So now look, I know Toronto's only, you know, made it that one time. And, and like Steve Dangle says, we're not going to talk about that. But, I mean, look, Edmonton, Edmonton's been waiting for this for so long. I don't think Edmonton catches Anaheim. They could, they could catch fire, they could catch him, but I'm predicting Anaheim gets the number two seed, 
Edmonton gets the number three seed in the Pacific Division. That unfortunately leaves Calgary as the odd man out, but I think Calgary gets to 99 points, just falling short of 100 points. I got Calgary getting to 99 points, so I think these teams, all three of them really, perform very similarly down the stretch here. Same basic number of games. They play each other a lot. Like the rest of this season is a lot of Pacific Division on Pacific Division. But I just don't think Calgary has quite the steam, especially if Brian Elliott continues to be out for any longer period of time. I think he's only got the flu, so he's probably not going to be out for very long. But if he misses a couple more games, there's a couple games in there I think you could see Calgary dropping. But that said... I've only got them getting to 99 points, but it will be good enough for the wild card one spot in the Western Conference. San Jose wins the Pacific Division, Anaheim 2, Edmonton 3, Calgary in the wild card one position. So we're going to wrap it up in the Central Division. As we talked about, I got Chicago winning the Central Division, 112 points, winning the Western Conference, being the number one Western Conference seed. In order to play the wild card two team, which we haven't divulged that yet. Chicago wins the division. Again, as I talked about, Minnesota is going to be the team that's really going to push Chicago for the division. So obviously, I've got Minnesota holding on to be the number two seed in the central division. Right now, they've got 92 points, 40 ROW. I think Minnesota gets to 110. I think they get to 46 ROW. They're going to win a lot of games down the stretch here, unfortunately for them, so is Chicago. So they're not going to catch Chicago, but they're going to have an excellent end of the season, and Minnesota gets the number two seed in the Central Division. Then it really comes down to Nashville and St. Louis. Now look, both of these teams are going to make the playoffs, but who they play and where they play is still very much up for grabs. Right now, Nashville leading the way with 81 points to St. Louis' 79, but St. Louis has three more ROW than does Nashville on the season, 36 to 33. These two teams play each other one more time. That game is in St. Louis, and I like the Blues to win that game. And it's possible that what it comes down to is whether or not Nashville picks up a point in that game. I don't think they do. St. Louis is the team that I think is really going to struggle out of the gate for the rest of the season here. This is a real sprint to the finish, especially in a situation like this. I think St. Louis only gets four points out of their next four games. That's going to be a tough stretch. They're going to be dejected, but I think St. Louis really going to turn it on at the end of the season. Both of these teams finish the season against, you know, not to be disrespectful, but they kind of have cupcake finishes to the regular season. Nashville finishes at home to the Islanders, then at Dallas and at Winnipeg. St. Louis finishes the season with trips to Florida and Carolina before hosting Colorado to end the season. Despite the fact that these are kind of cupcake games against teams that don't really have much of anything to play for anymore, I actually think both of these teams are going to kind of struggle at the end of the season. Nashville, not a good team on the road. They're only 15 and 20. Those last two road games at Dallas and at Winnipeg, I think Nashville loses both of them. St. Louis goes into Florida. I think they beat Florida, but then they have to go into Carolina. If Carolina's done anything right this season, it's win games at home. I think Carolina wins that game. What it really comes down to is Nashville's ability to pick up a point or two in a couple of these games that they lose and I don't think they're going to be able to do it. For the number three spot in the Central Division, I'm going to take St. Louis. I think St. Louis is going to leapfrog Nashville despite the fact that they trailed them by two points. I think St. Louis finishes with 97 points and 41 ROW. I think Nashville only finishes with 96 points and 38 ROW. So, I like St. Louis to get that number three spot in the Central Division, and I like Nashville to be knocked all the way down to the last wild card spot, wild card two in the Western Conference. So again, Central Division, Chicago wins it, number one seed in the Western Conference. I like Minnesota, number two. I like St. Louis to jump up and take number three. Nashville, a wild card two team 
in the Pacific. San Jose holds on to win the division. We've got Anaheim and Edmonton both at 100 points going 2-3. Anaheim winning with the ROW tiebreaker. And I like the Calgary Flames to get to 99 points and be the wild card one seed in the Western Conference. That would leave us with Western Conference first round playoff matchups of Chicago, number one seed in the West, taking on Nashville, an all Central Division matchup there. The other Central Division matchup, two versus three, the Minnesota Wild playing host to the St. Louis Blues. In the Pacific Division, San Jose going to win that division, taking on the Wild Card One team, Calgary Flames, all Pacific Division matchup there. And in the Pacific 2 versus 3, you got the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. Anaheim taking on Edmonton. And would you look at that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five Canadian teams make the playoffs one year after they all missed. To quote Martha Stewart, that is a good thing. Man, it has been a long time since I've made videos. I'm quoting Martha Stewart now. All right, folks, that is how I think the playoff race is going to fold out here over the next couple of weeks. It's a sprint at this point. Like I mentioned before, it's a sprint to the end of the season. Teams are really jockeying. It's who, who could make it. Where are they going to make it? Is somebody going to miss? Like, who's going to miss? Who's going to be that team that just misses out on the bubble? In my opinion, it's going to be the Tampa Bay Lightning that they're just going to miss out. Toronto's going to get that second wild card spot in the East and knock Tampa Bay out of the playoffs. That's the one, like, playoffs versus non-playoffs that's really yet to be decided is that Tampa Bay-Toronto, but I like the Maple Leafs. What do you guys think? Who do you think is going to win the divisions? Who do you think is going to make the playoffs? What do you think the first round playoff matchups are going to be? Give your predictions for my first round playoff matchups. I just mentioned them for you there a minute ago. Who, who, who do you think is going to win those playoff series? If those playoff series come to pass, and they're all in the description below, if you're watching the YouTube video, who do you think would win those hypothetical series if they got there, the teams with home ice versus the teams not with home ice? Who do you think would win those series? That's it for me, Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter. I love making hockey videos, and who knows, we might have a little playoff podcast action going again this year, maybe, maybe not, who knows? It's a possibility. The only way to know is to stay tuned. Thank you so much for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of the NHL regular season. It's a great time to be a hockey fan. Junior playoffs are just around the corner. Go Moose, go. I got my, my new Mooseheads jersey on, which is one and one in-game competition. So I got my new jersey on. I got my new hat on. I can't wait for junior playoffs. Can't wait to watch the rest of the NHL regular season. See who's going to make it, who's not, who's playing who, and how it's going to go. Enjoy it, and stay tuned.